NASA is shocked. SpaceX astronauts will actually sleep inside empty rocket fuel tanks on the moon. These giant metal tanks become bedrooms in space. Sounds crazy, right? But Elon Musk just proved it works better than anything NASA built in 50 years. The tanks are huge, bigger than your entire house, and they bury them under moon dirt to stop space rocks. But wait, there's one deadly problem nobody talks about. Something that could kill every astronaut up there. What is it, and how does SpaceX solve it? Let's dive right in. That deadly problem I mentioned? It's lunar dust, and it's been NASA's nightmare for 56 years. Here's what they don't want you to know. Apollo 17 astronaut Harrison Schmidt almost died on the moon. Not from equipment failure, not from oxygen loss, from breathing microscopic glass daggers. Picture this. You're 240,000 miles from Earth. You've just finished a moonwalk. Your suit looks dirty, but harmless. Just gray powder, right? Wrong. The moment you step inside your spacecraft, you smell gunpowder. Your throat burns like fire. Your nose bleeds. Welcome to what NASA secretly calls lunar hay fever. Except it can kill you. This dust isn't normal dirt. It's billions of razor-sharp glass fragments. Each one smaller than a human hair, but sharper than surgical scalpels. When cosmic radiation bombards the moon for millions of years, it creates these microscopic weapons. And they're electrically charged, meaning they stick to everything. Your suit, your equipment, your lungs. But here's the terrifying part NASA hid from the public. Schmidt's condition got worse every day he stayed on the moon. By day three, he could barely breathe. Doctors later found glass particles embedded in his respiratory system. If the mission had lasted one more day, he might not have made it home. So how does sleeping in fuel tanks solve this 56-year-old death trap? While NASA spent decades and billions trying to solve the dust problem with traditional habitats, SpaceX walked in with a solution so simple it made everyone else look stupid. Think about it. Traditional moon-based plans required shipping prefabricated modules from Earth at $10,000 per kilogram. A single room would cost more than a skyscraper. Then you'd have to assemble everything on the lunar surface while wearing bulky spacesuits and fighting that killer dust. SpaceX said, what if we don't build anything at all? Their Starship rocket has two massive fuel tanks. Once it lands on the moon, those tanks are empty, but they're also enormous. Each tank has more living space than a luxury mansion. Combined, they're bigger than the entire International Space Station. So instead of throwing away this massive space, SpaceX converts the rocket itself into the home. One mission delivers both transportation and the base. Genius. But the real breakthrough isn't the space, it's how they eliminate the dust problem entirely. Here's where SpaceX's plan gets absolutely wild. They don't just put astronauts in tanks, they bury the entire rocket underground. Picture a massive metal submarine lying on the ocean floor, except it's buried under 10 feet of lunar soil. This isn't just protection from meteorites, it's the ultimate dust filtration system. When astronauts return from spacewalks, they don't enter the living area directly. They go through underground tunnels carved into the lunar soil. As they move through these tunnels, the thick layers of moon dirt naturally filter out the deadly dust particles before they ever reach the clean living areas. It's like having a giant car wash that removes invisible glass daggers. The dust that killed Apollo missions gets trapped in the soil, exactly where it belongs. But NASA discovered something even more shocking about living in buried fuel tanks. Remember, we're talking about astronauts living inside what used to hold rocket fuel. Sounds claustrophobic and depressing, right? Wrong. These tanks are absolutely massive. We're talking about 9 meters wide and 40 meters long, roughly the size of a football field stood on its end. That's more space per person than most luxury apartments on Earth. But here's the psychological masterstroke that has NASA doctors stunned. SpaceX installs floor-to-ceiling windows facing Earth. Every single day, astronauts can look up and see that beautiful blue marble hanging in the black sky. Previous moon mission plans stuck people in windowless bunkers for months. SpaceX gives them a constant reminder of home. One test astronaut described it as the difference between being buried alive and living in an underground palace. 
The mental health impact is incredible. Zero reported cases of severe depression or anxiety in simulations. But the engineering behind these tank conversions is where things get truly insane. Converting a fuel tank into a livable space isn't like renovating a house. You're working in a vacuum with no atmosphere in temperatures that swing from 250 degrees above zero to 300 degrees below zero. Here's how they do it. First, specialized robotic cutting tools slice openings in the tank domes. These aren't normal tools. They're essentially giant space-rated can openers designed to cut through steel in a vacuum without creating sparks that could ignite residual fuel vapors. Then crews install airlocks, life support systems, radiation shielding, insulation, flooring, walls, bathrooms, and actual bedrooms with real beds. The entire process takes exactly 78 days, faster than building a traditional house on Earth. But the most shocking part? The inside of these converted tanks is more luxurious than anything NASA ever planned. We're talking about private bedrooms, common areas, exercise facilities, and even recreational spaces. The result is a lunar home with more comfort and space than most people have on Earth. But there's one deadly problem that's still threatened to kill everyone inside. Space radiation will kill you, not might kill you, will kill you. On Earth, our magnetic field and atmosphere protect us from cosmic radiation. On the moon, you're exposed to the full fury of space radiation 24-7. It's like getting multiple chest x-rays every single day. Traditional spacesuits provide minimal protection. After six months of lunar work, astronauts would exceed safe lifetime radiation limits. Most would develop cancer within years of returning to Earth. NASA's solution? Thick lead shielding that would make the base impossibly heavy and expensive to transport. SpaceX's solution? Water walls. The converted fuel tanks get lined with water-filled chambers. Water is incredibly effective at stopping radiation, much better than lead or concrete. As astronauts use water for daily needs, they're literally living inside a radiation shield that protects them every second. But here's the genius part. The water that protects them today becomes rocket fuel for tomorrow's missions. Nothing gets wasted. Yet even with all this protection, there was still one problem that could destroy everything. You need oxygen to breathe, obviously. But shipping oxygen from Earth costs $10,000 per liter. A single day's breathing would cost more than a luxury car. Traditional plans called for massive oxygen tanks shipped from Earth basically turning the moon base into an expensive life support machine that would bankrupt any space program. SpaceX found a different way. They're going to grow oxygen. Inside the converted fuel tanks, hydroponic farms produce fresh oxygen and food simultaneously. These aren't small experiments. We're talking about full agricultural systems that can support human life indefinitely. The psychological impact is incredible. After months of freeze-dried space food, fresh vegetables become worth their weight in gold. Astronauts report that tending growing plants helps combat the isolation and depression of living on an alien world. But the real breakthrough isn't food, it's complete self-sufficiency. Here's where SpaceX's plan becomes truly revolutionary. Those fuel tanks don't just house people, they house entire factories. 3D printers inside the tanks can manufacture tools, spare parts, even vehicles using lunar materials as raw materials. Need a wrench? Print it using moon dust. Need a lunar rover? Print that too. This changes everything economically. A simple tool that costs $10,000 to ship from Earth can be printed on the moon for virtually nothing. But the manufacturing capability goes way beyond tools. These tank factories can produce computer components, medical equipment, even building materials for expanding the base. Within five years, the base becomes completely independent from Earth supply missions. They can make everything they need on site. That raises a terrifying question that keeps NASA directors awake at night. What happens when the moon base doesn't need Earth anymore? Think about it. They're producing their own water, oxygen, food, tools, and rocket fuel. They have permanent shelter, manufacturing capabilities, and a growing population. They can build more habitats, more equipment, more of everything. At what point does the moon base become its own civilization? This isn't science fiction speculation. It's happening right now. SpaceX has openly discussed scenarios where lunar colonies become self-governing entities. 
The geopolitical implications are staggering. Who controls a self-sufficient lunar civilization? What laws apply? What happens if they declare independence from Earth? NASA officials won't discuss this publicly, but leaked documents reveal serious concerns about losing control of lunar operations to private companies. But the most shocking revelation is still coming. Here's SpaceX's real master plan that has NASA absolutely terrified. The moon base isn't the destination, it's the training ground. Every single challenge solved on the moon, radiation protection, life support, manufacturing, agriculture, psychology, directly applies to Mars missions. The lunar base becomes humanity's testing ground for interplanetary colonization. The fuel tanks that house moon astronauts today will house Mars colonists tomorrow. The water extraction techniques perfected in lunar craters will work in Martian polar ice caps. The agricultural systems growing food on the moon will feed Martian cities. SpaceX is essentially using the moon as a 240,000 mile high laboratory to perfect Mars colonization technology. And they're doing it faster and cheaper than any government program ever imagined. But here's the part that has NASA officials in complete panic. Traditional government space programs take 20 to 30 years to plan, approve, fund, and execute. SpaceX moves at startup speed. While NASA was still debating moon-based designs, SpaceX was already testing tank conversion procedures. While NASA was requesting budget approvals, SpaceX was landing rockets and catching them with giant mechanical arms. Current projections? First converted Starship tank habitat operational within 24 months. First permanent crew rotation within 36 months. Fully operational lunar manufacturing base within 48 months. NASA's competing lunar base program? Still in the conceptual design phase with no concrete timeline or funding approval. The space race just shifted from government agencies to private companies. And one company is already winning by decades. But perhaps the most shocking aspect isn't technical. It's economic. NASA's traditional moon base estimates, 100 plus billion dollars and 20 plus years to build a small research station. SpaceX's tank conversion approach, under $5 billion in five years to build a self-sufficient lunar city, that's not a 20% improvement. That's a 2,000% improvement in cost and timeline. This economic revolution makes lunar colonization profitable for the first time in human history. Instead of being a money pit that drains government budgets, moon bases become self-sustaining businesses that generate revenue. How? By selling services to other space agencies, manufacturing products for Earth markets, and eventually becoming the refueling station for all Mars missions. The moon transforms from an expensive scientific curiosity into the most valuable real estate in the solar system. We're approaching a tipping point that will define humanity's future in space. Within five years, SpaceX's lunar tank cities could house hundreds of people. Within 10 years, thousands. Within 20 years, tens of thousands. At that point, the moon stops being a destination and becomes a stepping stone to Mars, to the asteroid belt, to the outer planets. The solar system becomes humanity's backyard, and it all started with a simple question. Instead of building new habitats, why not just sleep in the fuel tanks? NASA spent 56 years trying to solve the lunar dust problem with complex engineering solutions. SpaceX solved it by going underground. NASA planned to ship everything from Earth at enormous cost. SpaceX plans to make everything on site. NASA designed small research stations for a few astronauts. SpaceX designed expandable cities for permanent populations. The difference isn't just technical, it's philosophical. NASA thinks like a government agency focused on safety and procedure. SpaceX thinks like a startup focused on speed and cost. And in the race to establish humanity's first permanent foothold beyond Earth, that difference is everything. The question isn't whether SpaceX's tank cities will work. Early tests prove they already do. The question is whether NASA can adapt fast enough to stay relevant in the new space economy. Because ready or not, the age of lunar colonization just began, and it's happening inside converted fuel tanks buried under 10 feet of moon dirt. The astronauts sleeping in those tanks tonight aren't just explorers. They're the first permanent residents of humanity's second world. So here we are. NASA spent half a century and hundreds of billions trying to solve the moon dust problem. SpaceX solved it by literally going underground 
and sleeping in fuel tanks. But this isn't just about clever engineering. We're witnessing the birth of humanity's first extraterrestrial civilization. Those astronauts aren't just visiting the moon, they're becoming lunar residents. And that raises the ultimate question. When these tank cities become self-sufficient, when they're manufacturing everything they need, when they declare independence from Earth, who's really in control? SpaceX just proved that private companies can move faster than governments. The moon race is over. The Mars race has begun. But here's what I want to know. Do you think we should be excited about corporate space colonies or terrified? Because in 20 years, the most powerful civilization in the solar system might not be on Earth at all. What's your take? Are we looking at humanity's greatest achievement or our biggest mistake? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see how SpaceX's Raptor engines make all this possible, check out our deep dive next. The future of humanity just changed forever. Thanks for being part of this journey with Space Corps. ULA is doomed. SpaceX just dropped a 61-foot extended fairing that could instantly free Dream Chaser from its 20-year delay nightmare. While ULA burns $100 million per launch and can't meet deadlines, SpaceX's Falcon Heavy now costs just $67 million and launches weekly. Dream Chaser's been trapped since 2004, but this fairing changes everything. But will this destroy ULA completely? Or is there something even more shocking coming? Let's dive right in. Here's what nobody talks about. Dream Chaser isn't stuck because it's broken. This $2 billion space plane has been flight ready for years, but there's been one massive problem. It literally doesn't fit inside any reliable rocket. Dream Chaser stretches 30 feet long and 15 feet wide with its wings extended. SpaceX's Falcon 9 has a fairing that's only 17 feet in diameter. It's like trying to stuff a Boeing 747 into a subway tunnel. Physically impossible. So Sierra Space made a catastrophic bet in 2004. They gambled everything on ULA's Atlas V, then Vulcan Centaur. But here's the insane reality. ULA launches twice a year, while SpaceX launches every three days. Dream Chaser has watched SpaceX's Dragon complete over 30 cargo runs to the ISS while sitting in a hangar. NASA